Okay, good afternoon everyone and uh, we are very thankful for uh, Engineer Jomer Katipon for inviting us to be your uh, resource speaker for this topic, Solar Rooftops, uh, the key to industrialization. So uh, without much ado, we'll now uh, proceed. Okay, my uh, uh, first message would be God will bless our country more if every Filipino home has a solar rooftop. And here is our uh, table of contents for the presentation. Um, we'll discuss on backgrounders and then of course uh, the present statistics of solar and what is the potential in doing this uh, solar business. How can you start the business? And uh, of course, uh, what are the general arrangement of uh, solar rooftops? How to estimate and prepare quotations? How to source your supplies? Price list for estimate purposes? and uh, tips on design, installation, and maintenance, and some other topics. Okay, we have one of the most expensive electricity rates in the whole of uh, Asia and Australia and New Zealand, as indicated in this, this slide. No? You would see that Manila, the uh, Meralco, uh, would rank number three to Sydney and, second, and next to Tokyo or Japan. That was a, it is a figure in 2013. And in 2016, again, it is still not changing, although we believe that uh, the Duterte administration have done something, especially in the IRR, the Implementing Rule in the Renewable Energy Act, which uh, will be discussed later. And on this next slide, we'll show you that our consumption, Philippines, 668 kilowatt hours per population, per person shows that we have one of the lowest when in fact our neighbors including uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia have much higher uh, kilowatt hour per population, per person consumption. It means that in these other countries which have higher kilowatt hours uh, consumption per uh, population, it means that their electricity rates are much much cheaper than our country and maybe it is also uh, seen as they have more factories in these countries they have more manufacturing our economy has been more into uh, uh, sending people abroad to work uh, so that has been and and we lost a lot of uh, industries in the past uh, 30 to 40 years because uh, the electricity rates has gone up and gone up so today we have an opportunity for this and this is solar a very high Philippine electricity rate causes all our products to become very expensive which cannot compete with the products of our neighboring countries with cheaper electricity rates like the likes of China, Taiwan, South Korea, Vietnam, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, among others. And uh, the Renewable Energy Act mentions about uh, four in its preamble, accelerate the exploration of solar and wind including hydro, geothermal, and other renewable energy sources and letter B is increase the utilization of renewable energy and uh, letter C is encourage the development and letter D is establishing the necessary infrastructure meaning to say the, the interconnection or the net metering system that should be in place so that uh, we could maximize this energy that uh, is produced from uh, renewable sources especially solar rooftops and in the future when we add more wind turbines okay so uh, in October of last year uh, take note of the date October of last year that is already the time of President Duterte the Energy Regulatory uh, Commission has uh, amended the implementing rule of the Renewable Energy Act and uh, it was unprecedented because number one it uh, put a uh, deadline in the approval of net metering no in the past, uh, the connection of net metering by the distribution utility, which is Meralco, took very long. Sometimes uh, uh, in the early, er earlier times, uh, it would take uh, years, huh? and one year, and six months. Today, with the implementation of this IRR, uh, 20, day, 20 days is the maximum processing by the DUs if, you are, if, you have, if an applicant has complete papers meaning to say you have uh, uh, the complete uh, letters and permits and licenses 
that has been processed by the local government unit. So, in other words, you have to secure a uh, an electrical permit for the installation of uh, solar rooftop, and after uh, the issuance of the permit, you have to install it, and after the installation, you have to have it inspected by the uh, inspector, electrical inspector of the local uh, government unit, so the office of the building official. Of course, uh, 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 the, the other uh, important thing that uh, this uh, IRR brought to us is it removed the distribution impact study. This amounted to a big amount because some of the applicants only have a small uh, you know, capacity to install. No? So the DIS before, the distribution impact study, amounted to 19,000 plus another one nine. And this was removed by the ERC. Uh, ERC said that uh, the utility company is, anyway, uh, protecting its system by doing its own um, impact studies in uh, the entire system. Of course, uh, the other uh, uh, changes in the IRR was uh, the, the un anti slanding provision. Originally, it was uh, 2 minutes or uh, 120 seconds. Now, uh, they made it longer, 10 minutes or uh, 10 minutes, I mean, six is about 600 seconds. So, the reason for this, of course, if they have, uh, if uh, power has gone back already and uh, there are fluctuations in the power of the utility, then there will be enough time for the inverter, uh, the grid time inverter to be make, to make some adjustments, no? to read what is happening to the grid before automatically connecting to the grid, okay? So, why do Filipinos uh, need to adapt solar rooftop as soon as possible? Well, uh, here is my uh, theory. When you put solar rooftop in your homes, on your roof, in your uh, offices, so you will receive the free energy from the sun. Okay, and then that uh, free energy from the sun will therefore supply uh, partly the energy that you need in your house or even provide uh, most of the energy that you need or even provide extra depending on your load inside your home or your office then if that will happen uh, the power plants and the grid which are supplying power the present power plants like the, the coal-fired power plants the gas fired and all other uh, power plants in there including of course the renewable energy power plants like the hydros so many hydros in there so many geothermals and there are also already the, the windmills uh, remember there are so many windmills already in Dailocos, in Tanay, and uh, also in Katiklan, and in Gimaras Island, okay, and uh, some other uh, other sources, okay, and uh, uh, of course, uh, after is this being uh, felt by the uh, distribution company, um, all of them, uh, those who are involved in the, in the energy distribution and generation, including uh, the, D the DU, the transmission company which is today is the NGCP and of course all of those uh, power plants in there they will feel this that that there is already energy coming from other sources in the grid which is not in their system so what will they do then of course as there will be more of us putting in the solar rooftop there is no other choice for them but to lower their charges because uh, there's the uh, law of low supply and demand, okay? When there is uh, a competitor in the system, and the competitor are uh, the consumer themselves, consumer who are putting their solar rooftops, then these uh, suppliers will be forced to lower down their rates so that they can probably try to hedge the, the addition, the addition of these uh, solar rooftops, okay? So that will happen. The cost per kilowatt hour of electricity and the average in the grid will come down gradually. And if that will happen, if you have a low, a, a, a lessening cost on the energy, then it could attract investors. So number six will happen. More investors will come to put up factories in our country and there will be more jobs also. And it can help our, uh, our countrymen uh, because uh, our countrymen, they, do, they cannot find a job here, they have to go abroad. Find The problem today in the abroad is uh, uh, we have so many countrymen in the Middle East who are sent home because of the pandemic. So we have to do something on this, okay? So so with, with more investors possibly coming, hopefully, huh, uh, we, we just uh, 
heard recently that uh, um, these big uh, uh, manufacturing companies like uh, Japanese no, are pulling out some of, some of their factories in China. So, you know, if we could do something about uh, rates here, we could improve here, then maybe these factories would come to the Philippines, no? would come to our country, and that would help a lot of our, our, uh, uh, our economy. No? Okay, so when uh, we have these investors, what will happen to, the, to those who are involved in the power uh, generation and supply? Uh, like the Meralco, the independent power producers, the Nas National Grid Corporation, the electric cooperatives in the countryside. Well, of course, they will have more customers because of the investors that will be coming in. See, with lower electricity rate, you have more investors. So, these power companies will have more customers also. So, it's a chicken and egg thing, no? So if that will happen, then of course number seven will will happen. Huh? Uh, seven will happen. Rapid industrialization, or you may say uh, this is eight and this is seven. No, never mind. Rapid industrialization will and so and therefore come will uh, there will be progress in our country gradually because of the manufacturing that is coming in. No? Uh, look at Taiwan. Uh, they have, uh, they are into manufacturing. Look at uh, Korea. And of course, Japan has been there a long time ago, since the 1980s. Uh, they've been there, and of course, uh, some other countries are also catching up with these uh, uh, countries. Huh? China, uh, you mean, I mean, uh, Japan, Korea, and of course, now China. And Taiwan is coming in there, and of course, India is also in there. And uh, we've been left behind. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, we should have been ahead of them because uh, our. Uh, Utility company, the Meralco, was the first electric company in Asia, uh, because the Philippines was the was a colony of America, and America was the uh, the first, uh, the second bastion of industrial revolution. Re remember, the first bastion of industrial revolution, re uh, re industrialization was uh, uh, this uh, Europe, and then uh, America, and because America, uh, they, they are our uh, colonizers. That means that uh, they introduced electricity to our country first. But what had happened? Oh, they even introduced the airplane first to our country. Did you know that Philippine Airlines is the first airline in Asia? You can check on that. And how come our country is now not the first? No, But we are so many rungs lower than being the first. Okay, So we need to act fast. And that's why... You as uh, electronics uh, practitioners, as well as my colleagues in the electrical profession, as well as others who have the interest in this, are invited or urged to come in to do this uh, solar rooftops. Uh, we s we have to start on our way. No, otherwise, if we do not do it fast, maybe our ASEAN uh, Asian neighbors can act faster than us, especially the Vietnamese who are you know they have no corruption, uh, very little corruption in there and uh, Malaysia also and uh, Thailand and if they do it faster than us then they could attract the investors okay and we may we might lose the chance to become the the next uh, the next uh, uh, or the third in the uh, the fourth or the third or the fourth okay now uh, so I already answered this will the power companies Meralco etc lose money and will go bankrupt no because they will eventually have more customers more sales more profit when the economy has grown due to industrialization that will end so so see okay let's see the performance of the world with regards to solar now this slide shows you that China as of uh, uh, the end of 2018 leads the world in the production of solar energy 176,000 megawatts and followed by the United States 60,000 and Japan at 56,000 and Germany at 45,000 megawatts and India at 32 almost 33,000 and Italy at 20,000 United Kingdom at 13,000 Australia 11,000 Pakistan at 10,000 France at 9,000 South Korea at uh, almost 8,000 so top 11 we are not in the top 11 where's the Philippines the Philippines is only about just over a thousand megawatts of solar 
solar farm capacity or solar power generation capacity. So in other words, uh, you know, this is business to put up this. Uh, you have their solar Philippines, you have the Ayala's going in there, and so many others that are already in uh, in uh, uh, solar uh, rooftops as well as, uh, I mean, solar farms. But uh, uh, it's not enough. Okay, so we uh, homeowners, we the engineers as well as as well and uh, technocrats, we have to do something to help our country. Not only we will be helping our country, but also first we will be helping ourselves when we put solar rooftop on our roofs. And those of you who may want to pursue this business or this uh, uh, technology opportunity, then I urge you to uh, immediately, you know. Uh, consider this upon uh, finishing your your uh, course maybe or even uh, even if you are still uh, working you can you can already do it no because uh, when you install it in your rooftop in your home then you can already offer it to your neighbors uh, how many neighbors do you have the one on your on your right side the one on your left side the one in front of you and the, and the whole community around you you can already offer them so that uh, you we can do this thing okay Okay, this is just a slide just to explain where the energy from the sun is going. Anyway, uh, I was just mentioning about this, uh, this part here on the right side, which uh, produces a very, amount, a very big amount of the energy coming from the sun, which is about equivalent to 83,700 terawatts. Huh? You know, you, the one that is going to the plants here, 100 terawatts only, you know, uh, plants, photosynthesis, 100 terawatts. And here you have uh, hydrological circulation and air traffic, meaning to say wind turbines, no? the energy that could come from the wind turbines, and hydrological, hydrological uh, circulation, meaning the energy that would come from uh, hydroelectric power plants, which is about only 40,400 terawatts. And the energy that could be tapped from solar is 53,400. But the problem in here is, uh, we have a bigger area for water like the oceans and the, the, the seas, no? Uh, so therefore, there is a limit on the area, the area in the world where you could put the solar of top. But here on the right side is a big part of that energy coming from the sun, which is almost on top, no? And this is the heat that is coming from the sun. The moment the sun rises, you already feel this heat. And today there is no yet technology that really could tap this energy and i would strongly challenge you as engineers to become uh, uh, innovators and find out how we could tap this heat uh, you know this is the latent heat from the atmosphere if there would be a device that could be invented and could tap this then that would probably uh, change the uh, the world you know because not only will get energy from solar but you also get energy from the conversion of this latent heat okay ito yung init sa palibot natin okay if you can convert that maybe i don't know it's good it could be a thermocouple uh technology or or some others uh let's it's let's try to find it as filipino engineers maybe we could be able to uh, uh discover this uh, uh Maybe, maybe, okay. Now, what uh, what type of business are you going to uh, adapt? Well, my suggestion is, uh, being engineers, we go to services. When you go services, that is uh, solar designing, consultancy, solar project management, solar construction installation, renewable energy, solar batteries, and so on. And of course, the preventive maintenance of this. So the moment you supply and install solar to your neighbor uh, in the future you will be the one to maintain this also so part of the business will be preventive maintenance in the years to come remember that the life of the solar panels will reach up to 30 years so you can look at this as your possible uh, opportunity to make uh, a good uh, vocation or business in the next coming 30 30 years or even more okay you can also go to sales but of course going to sales will need you some bigger money okay puhunan ikaw nga and of course manufacturing again is much bigger but it's also an opportunity if you have some partners and you can tap money from the bank 
or from investors, you can also go into solar manufacturing. Uh, okay. So how about uh, what is the present statistics? Okay, let's look at this. Huh? According to the NHA or Philippine Statistics Authority in 2015, uh, the Philippines already has about 24 million housing units. Take a look at this. 24 million housing units. That's 2015. Today is 2020. Okay, so that means that from 2015 to 2020, the National Housing Authority has continued to make houses uh, for our countrymen. And not only them, also the private sector. You, know, you can mention about uh, the billiard company, Vistalan, uh, Avida, uh, the MCI, and those others. They continue to make housing and sell it to our uh, uh, countrymen, oh, especially those who are abroad and maybe those who are in the middle class. So, so these numbers ever increasing, huh? 24 million homes. It could be now today 25 million it could be 26 million we don't know okay and this is just to show the uh, what is the apportionment between the single houses and the multi that's the high rise and the duplex so if you combine the duplex houses with the the single that's uh, almost 90 percent no 80.7 plus 7 that would be something like uh, 87.8 uh, percent of the houses of these 25 million houses are of this type and they are the, the easiest to inst to provide rooftop solar this one and this ones no of course uh for a high rise the area on top of it is a little smaller than the area for this and this okay so therefore uh this home this the roofs of these buildings the homes Covered garage, warehouses, basketball courts, uh, school roofs, any uh, any building for that matter, no, is a large potential collective area to install solar panels, no. Uh, okay, so as today, as of today, it is estimated that only a very very small percentage of these structures or buildings have solar panels installed, as seen in this su succeeding satellite. So I tried to. Uh, just get some a few satellite photos no so this is yakal somewhere in project four see uh, how many houses are do we see here let's just uh, make some estimates one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and fifteen and you cannot see any one of them with a solar rooftop and so with this somewhere in project six uh, I do not see any house that has a solar rooftop. Okay. So with this, this part is in uh, Teachers Village. Mahabagin Street is Teachers Village. Malalahanin. You would see none of this. Huh? Huh? I don't, this one seems to be a ventilate, ventilation. Vent, this one is vent. It's not, uh, it's not a solar rooftop. No? And here in Makati, uh, somewhere in uh, ben, Cam, ben Camino Street, I cannot see, I do not see one at all. As a matter of fact, in my place here in Pasig, uh, in our uh, Christian village, I, I know we only, uh, there are only uh, three homeowners here that, that have this solar rooftop. Uh, ho 400 homes with only three. Okay? So, you see, it's not even 1%. It's not even 1% of the homes in here. Okay? So, therefore, we have a, it, the, the potential for this business is very big because many of us do not have this yet. Okay, so how many are involved in the business? Uh, you just check on your Facebook. Uh, in Facebook, uh, Solar Power Philippines, 2012, the 100, 137,000, and in uh, Solar Power Philippines only 73,000. But actually, the, on, the the number of people involved are only a few. You can check on that. Okay. So, what type of company you're going to use? My suggestion is use this first one, single proprietorship. It will be very easy for you to put up your company. How? Okay, you just go to the, the Department of Trade and Industry. Uh, you can even try online, the DTI. And uh, I know uh, the, the, the amount to pay is only something like just over 200 pesos. Uh, if you have some 
good partners, maybe you can try partnership or corporation or even a cooperative, but it will be much easier if you start it with a single proprietorship because it's only you and your parents or maybe your spouse or partner that will be making the decision, okay? So, go to the DTI and of course after uh, getting the name uh, registered of course you have to select a good name for your business then uh, get a barangay permit get a mayor's permit get a BIR registration in the BIR you'll be uh, there is an available uh, recibo receipts from the BIR so you just have to pay it I think you know one to two thousand maybe okay I don't know how, how much it is already but uh, that's how we start it okay then, uh, of course, you have to prepare uh, paper uh, or documents in the office like, well, the OR comes from the BIR, of course. Book of accounts, or, you know, as engineering students, you have uh, uh, IE, in the industrial engineering uh, subjects, right? You, uh, you have uh, engineering economics, okay? Then, uh, sales ledger, purchase ledger, payroll book, attendance books, caller's book, borrower's log, Quotation forms, transmittal forms, bill of quantities form or estimating form, canvassing forms, purchase order forms, and then you have to design your letterhead and your logo, and of course, maybe your business card or calling cards. There you have it. You're ready to do business. Okay, so now we go to the, the main topic itself. Here are the advantages of solar. Saves you money, earn you additional income, it's efficient, it's non-polluting and so on and so forth. We'll not uh, discuss it in details anymore. And I see three apparent disadvantages. No? Number one is the high initial cost. And the second one is uh, the reduced re reliability. And number three is the large area needed. Here are my answers. With respect to the cost, ever since after the Renewable Energy Act was enacted in 2008, the price of this solar panels has gone down tremendously as you could see huh? in 2009 when I first bought my solar panel it was equivalent to 76,000 for a 300 watts take note a 300 watts equivalent watts power uh, peak watts uh, at the time in, 19, in 2009 cost 76,000 fast forward to 2020 now it only cost you 5,400 uh, is that not amazing so in other words as there has been users and of course there also been uh, more suppliers more manufacturers worldwide the price has come down tremendously from 76,000 per 300 watts to only 5,400 uh, per piece okay so it's coming down it's coming down just like the cell phone before during the late 1990s the cell phone was expensive. Motorola cell phone cost something like twenty to thirty thousand per piece. But today, it it costs only less than a thousand. I mean to say, the simplest, of course, the simplest cell phone. Huh? Okay, so it's coming down. Then on the item and registrability, my suggestion is, uh, if you put it in there, then put up a small business at home, like myself. I put a an office in my home, powered by solar. Okay, and therefore, instead of my business being powered from Meralgo, it is already powered by solar. See, so I earn from it, not only from saving the energy that I consume, but also my business also earn money for myself. See, okay, of course, the other option is you go grid tie, no? On grid or grid tie, because when you go grid tie, you export the extra energy to the Meralgo. But be ready, of course, when you go grid tie, you have to apply for net metering so that uh, the excess energy will be will have will be given a value by Meralgo. No, so as of today, my estimate is that the energy that you export will uh, be valued something like less, a little less than half of the rate that you pay for your electricity. The the, the, consu the whatever energy that you buy from Meralgo, if it is an average of ten pesos per kilowatt hour. The cost of your export will be something like four pesos and eighty centavos. Uh, why? Well, because Meralgo wants also to make money from your export to him. So that's how they make money, huh? They make money by selling to you what comes from uh, the, the, the from the IPPs. 
Then also, when you sell it to him, he will buy it at 480 at night time when you uh, supply it back to you, will sell you at 10 pesos. So that's how we do it, you know, in a grid tie system. So anyway, what is important here is the, the IRR, the ERC has removed the distribution impact study charges that I've mentioned already. And also, the time of approval is already shortened to 20 days. No longer like, you know, very long like before, no? Okay, the third option for this is to go purchase batteries. No, when you purchase batteries, instead of exporting to Meralco the excess energy, you will be putting it in the batteries. Okay, and therefore, if you put it in the batteries at night time, you'll be using it. So instead of selling it to Meralco at four pesos and eighty centavos, you'll put it in your batteries so that you can use it at night time. Okay, of course, there is a cost for the battery. Huh? Huh? there is a cost for this. It's uh, quite expensive. Uh, when you uh, put batteries in your system, usually the payback becomes longer, something like uh, three years. Uh, when in fact you have a grid tie, it's only less than two years. Huh? Take note of that. If you go grid tie with net metering, it's less than two years. Huh? Payback or return on investment. But when you add batteries, then it becomes three years or, or more, even could go even four years. But of course, there is this new new uh, uh, battery the lithium ion which later you will see is a is a, has a better economic return in the long run no you will see it later okay so you can know uh, you can select this kind of businesses like myself i put up i put up my own office here and uh, you can also do, do this no uh, buy a freezer sell uh, sell uh, frozen meat put a laundry services in your place you know and anything uh, wag lang gaya gaya no uh, you, you have to select one that you love really and that's how to do the business okay so now we go to the simplest grid tie because uh, like i said grid tie is the simplest uh, at only at the cost of uh, less than uh, 15,000 or 14,500 pesos you already have a grid tie so a grid tie will look like this you have the solar panel and then you have an inverter 300 watts panel 300 watts inverter then just connect it to your nearest outlet and presto you already have solar you already have uh, you're already harvesting energy from the sun and injecting it in your electricity system in your home as simple as that and if you happen to be not consuming much of this energy coming from the sun then there is a possibility for it to be exported as you would see the arrows here uh, and these arrows here show you that the energy could go to the grid okay see and in the future you could also add small wind turbines in your roof it's possible yeah it's possible so you can augment your uh, solar rooftops with wind turbines okay and uh, well this is just to explain the hydro uh, the pump storage hydro that we have there in uh, laguna in kalayan laguna how it works so i was i was uh, telling here that the solar rooftop could power probably power up this uh, kalayan uh, uh, hydroelectric power plant which is a pump storage you know? it pumps up water to the Kaliraya and then it, it brings down the water to uh, put it back so it acts like an equivalent of a big storage energy system energy storage system just like equivalent to a big big battery you no know? okay so it can be done and we have so many uh, rivers in our country which we could probably do but the problem is the EPIRA law of 2001 has already removed from the government the um, the, uh, the the construction of power plants. No, it has privatized most of this. Uh, you t you you try to observe the geothermal plants have been already privatized. It's already controlled by the Lopez uh, uh, group of companies, and uh, the hydroelectric are owned mostly by the Abawitis uh, group of companies and of course uh, some other uh, uh, like uh, the Ayala's own the, uh, partly of the, the wind, uh, wind farms in Ilocos uh, and elsewhere and even I think in Guimaras and so on and so forth even the solar farms so it's no longer in the hands of Napucor during the time of President Marcos the construction of power generation facilities was was still under the NAPOCOR, National Power Corporation. But today, 
because of the Epira law in 2001, uh, you can blame it to our lawmakers when they were uh, when they decided to privatize these uh, power generation plants that were constructed during martial law, and they put it in the hands of the oligarchs. Okay, so that has affected, that has increased the cost of energy in the grid. That explains why we have one of the most expensive electricity in Asia. That's why I'm driving at this solar because it will help us a lot. Okay, so you can also put it in gasoline stations. I mean, solar rooftops instead of just having your ordinary uh, GIC roofing, long span roofing, or what you can use solar, and eventually you can also put charging station in your uh, gasoline station because eventually. Uh, you can no longer stop this because there will be more electric vehicles, uh, vehicles being produced. Look at America. Look at Mr. Uh, Tesla, Tesla Electric, Mr. Elon Musk. He continuously uh, ad, uh, make manufacture uh, an advanced electric vehicle, the Tesla vehicle, and uh, he aims to produce to manufacture a Tesla car, electric force that will have a battery that will last. A lifetime uh, that's what he's what that is the aim of mr. Elon Musk of Tesla and he has partnered with a local company in China to manufacture cheaper uh, lithium-ion batteries so that's the way to go uh, there's no way there's no other way no the internal combustion engines gradually will become uh, the, the use of this will become less and less and less and less there's no way there's no other way to go no uh, of course the, the fossil fuels, uh, the gasoline, uh, you know, crude oil, the gas, and, uh, and uh, coal, uh, you know, is finite. No? Maobos din yan. See? So there, there's no other way except to go to renewables. Now, if you do not adopt that, if these big power companies in our country will not, uh, you know, see that and just become hard headed to accept this uh, thing, we will just be left behind as a country. Okay? But of course, like me, I will not stop it. Uh, I mean, I will continuously advocate for this to uh, uh, convince you. Uh, you should be my partners. No? We electrical professionals and the electronic professionals are partners in this. Huh? And, uh, you know, the electrical electronics people, uh, you know, there will be a lot of business on your side, not only on the installation, but also the repair of the inverters in the future. See? Because it's dual, no? You have the solar panel, very simple thing, and then you have the inverter. Now we, I have seen some inverters that fail in three, four, five years time. So therefore, there is a lot of business also in repairing this, uh, these uh, inverters. No, they can still work. You know, you just need to replace the damaged MOSFETs. I have, we have often one, uh, an MUST inverter, uh, five kilowatts. It has been in use for about three years four years you know and the four MOSFETs inside were damaged already uh, of course there was a mistake in the installation there was not enough ventilation provided they installed it in a cramp location and that has uh, affected the life of the uh, of the inverter no uh, meaning uh, the, the heat sink is not cannot uh, handle it no it cannot handle all the heat being produced inside so uh, uh, so there's this big business and then of course transport like this electric vehicle and of course this uh, this EV uh, and so on so and and at, at this time that I cannot afford an electric vehicle I also put a, a rooftop uh, a solar panel on top of my car so this is my Innova 2005 then it has an inverter inside and a, so, and a separate um, solar battery at the back okay and then of course I have 220 volts inside and this FX vehicle is also provided with the same solar panel with an inverter and a so in its own uh, uh, battery and it has a 4 kilowatts inverter so in other words uh, this uh, vehicle has done servicing works for our projects as far as Davao City and Cagayan de Oro also in Mactan uh, in the Visayas also uh, uh, also in Calatagan, Batangas, and uh, in Luzon. So, very practical, you know. Uh, uh, it can already provide power for small uh, hand tools, no? So, you can also, I do not need to, we do not need to bring uh, 
is a genset anymore to the project site to do our project no okay and and this is just an idea of helping alleviate traffic but before the pandemic but of course today the traffic has gone uh, uh, not like before but of course I've noted that it's gradually coming back again so my idea is to put solar rooftop on top of MRT3 that's a suggestion of course to the government no? uh, above the MRT3 and its station as well as above the the, uh, the catenary the catenary is the power line like this one that's the catenary and here are the catenary in LRT2 LRT1 and MRT3 so when you put this the energy that you produce will be injected to the power lines of uh, the trend and of course when you reduce it you can save money then you will be uh, improving the facility of these transport systems and therefore you can bring down the fare rates after bringing down the fare rates you might attract more more passengers especially those car owners and possibly alleviate the traffic that's the idea okay so um, this was already mentioned earlier and here is uh, the small 300 watts that I've mentioned earlier. You have a 300 watts panel and a 300 watts inverter which you can interconnect and you can expand it from one set to up to 12 sets. No? So if you have 300 watts times 12, that's already 3,600 watts of capacity. Okay. Uh, let me, can we check our time? Uh, I do not know. I don't have a monitor in the time. Let me just check. Uh, hello, Jomer, Junior Jomer. How much time do we have? Anyway, so let's continue on. Okay, so here I'm just showing you a simple way of uh, uh, doing. Also, if you want to buy second-hand, uh, second-hand uh, solar panels like this one. This is a 25 watts, a small one, 12 volts DC, and then. Uh, uh, another small one 150 watts and a small one 100 watts so you combine these three you connect them in series you will be producing what 12 plus 18 volts plus 15 volts you produce 45 volts dc maximum which is the rated maximum voltage of your input inverter i mean i mean i'm, I'm just showing an example so okay so this is an off-grid system 500 watts and I, I'm just trying to show uh, how, how it is uh, done. We have here the solar panel and a charge controller and a battery. So the energy is stored in the battery and then and then the inverter in converts the 12 volts DC power to your AC. So that's how it is, no? And you can provide the transfer switch uh, for your loads, either from the inverter or from the utility or from the Meralco. And it only costs something like 24,500 uh, to have this with a small battery, no, say uh, your battery would be 120 ampere hours and 300 watts panel, a charge controller, and an inverter of let's say 500 watts. Okay, then that the cost would only be 24,500. And you can have also a 24 volt system, so that means you have two batteries in series producing 24 volts. Okay, it's possible today. I'm using 48 volt system because uh, I heard. I have uh, gradually expanded my system from when I started in 2009, 12 volts, and then later on, 24 volts, and today is 48 volts, okay? And I'm now using the MPPT. The MPPT is a kind of charge controller that is much, much more efficient than the ordinary PWM. This is a PWM, pulse width modulated, PWM, pulse width modulated. You know it because your electronic... Uh, uh, engineers okay and here is a an illustration showing the the efficiency of the MPPT this red line shows the output while the blue line is the output of the PWM so it's double okay now we go to samples of uh, uh, estimates so I put in here uh, a listing solar panel and the corresponding price charge controller of grid inverter, deep cycle battery, transfer switch, uh, DC circuit breaker, AC circuit breaker, DC wirings, AC wirings, structural mounting, 
labor and supervision, testing and commissioning. So, you know, and here's just a schematic. And here I'm just showing you a simple hybrid, a combination of, a, uh, of an off-grid off -grid inverter and a grid tie inverter, just to give you an idea. And here is now the, late, the, the, the um, latest uh, design of inverters, which include already uh, so many functions, like um, it functions like an inverter, it functions like a charger, it functions like uh, a charge controller, and it functions like a transfer switch, uh, uh, and it can export energy to Meralco, or it can transfer power to a genset if Meralco is, is brown out. So this kind of inverter today is a hybrid grid type inverter. It is, of course, uh, quite expensive. The latest uh, price that I've seen for a 5 kilowatts is uh, something like 71,000. But uh, several years ago, when it was uh, came out from the market, it had a cost of over 100,000, no? something like uh, maybe 110, 120,000 for a 5 kilowatts. But today, it costs 71,000. So I believe in the future, it will go down farther. Uh, take note, this is a hybrid grid type. No? Hybrid grid type meaning to say uh, it has its own battery and it, can, it is parallel to Meralco utility and therefore it can also export energy to Meralco in case there is an extra coming from the solar panels. Okay, So that's how it is. Okay, And here are just the diagrams showing the different function of this uh, inverter. Now go to estimates, sample quotations. Oh, oh, I, I actually have shown this earlier and here is another one so uh, by the way you those who may want to get a uh, copy of this I uh, will just ask engineer uh, Jomer to uh, and then I will send it to him so he can share it to all of you all participants okay in addition to this being uploaded on YouTube you can also watch it there uh, tomorrow but today it can also be recorded and also we can send you the PDF of this PowerPoint okay so here is another example we can make it faster now and here is another example just for your guide and here is a sample quotation okay I hope you can <laughs> catch. Uh, let me uh, see my uh, no comment from uh, engineer Jomer so uh, okay let's continue on and here is another quotation, sample quotation. Huh? And uh, this one is another. Uh, take note of the <laughs> address. The client is engineer Rodolfo R. Duterte. Oh. And here's a typical quotation that I've submitted to a client. And uh, you will notice that it was approved very fast no? by uh, the client. In a few, uh, a few days after it was submitted, the client approved it. So I have to make it. No? Now, how to make a quick solar estimate? Okay. Uh, of course, we are engineers. So you should come to know how to do it, really. But if you want to have a shortcut, I tried to develop this no? matrix. Uh, so how to use this? Okay, let me explain it. You see item 8. This is the first column. You, have, you see item 8. And there is 4,500 in the second column. You know, the second column is the average monthly billing. So, assuming you have a, an average bill, monthly bill, electric bill of 4,500, you will move to the right side and it will show you 1.5 kilowatts inverter and then the budget would be 78,000 something for a grid tied system. Take note, huh? 78,000 for a grid tied. And if you want to have a battery like an off grid, it would cost you a budget of 117,000. Also, this, this uh, uh, third to the last column. Of course, the second to the last column is the grid tie cost. So, so it includes already the components. Okay, let me give you another example on how to use this. I line 20. Line 20 says you're paying 11,000 a month on the average. So you go to the right side. Then the budget should be. 225,000 for your grid tie system and if you need a battery like an off grid 282,000 and the capacity is something like 
kilowatts or 3,800 watts. Another example, Ter line 34, 30,000. Average monthly bill is 30,000. You go to the right side. You have to budget 600,000, okay, for a grid tie or 656 for a for a grid tie, uh, for an off-grid, no? So the capacity of the of the system would be 10 kilowatts. So this matrix would aid you to make a fast way to estimate. No? So if you're offering it to your neighbor, or you just tell it to him, how, you'll, you'll ask your neighbor, how much are you paying in your monthly bill? Then just go to this and uh, see it. Then you can see. Of course, you have to put a markup. This costing doesn't include your profit. No, Doesn't include your profit. It has a little budget for installation. No? You, you see this uh, fourth to the last column is uh, a budget and wiring and installation. So you have to put some markup. No taxes included. You have to put a, a markup. No, say for example, you add maybe 15, 20, 30 percent, as the case may be, so that you will have, uh, you will have profit. Also, you will earn. Your business will prosper. Okay. And this is just my sample computation for the return on investment. It's a very simple. Uh, uh, analysis for the return on investment okay I, it mentions two years five months but today with uh, with a net metering system it's less than two years okay catalog of suppliers because I'm I want you to be in this business I have included already the the different companies that you can contact for you to be able to get your supplies so including here number one Metro Green Tech Electrical Engineering, EP Solar, RLBS, JDW, Zonri, Ion, 1.3 na Solar, and so on and so forth. Uh, there's Solaric in here, Sonalex, Sonergy, so many of them. They have the contactors, contact numbers here. Okay, and here just some calling cards: Metro Green Tech with numbers here, and uh, Electrical with uh, their numbers here. Okay, and uh, EP Solar with numbers here. And ZDW with numbers here, Zondri numbers here, Ayan with uh, let me see, there's the number uh, here, there's the number and also the email, and Trina, uh, Trina Solar, uh, where's the number here below? So many of them, J Solar, Solari, oh here's the number. So, and of course battery supply, you can go to Motolite, and all the rest that I've included. Now, you might worry about batteries. You know, batteries have longer lives. If you've been having, your, if you have bought batteries before for your car, the warranty in the car is only 12 months or maybe 18 months. So, in, it is really true that uh, the life of the automotive battery is very short. But other batteries, like the marine battery, the one they used for, for uh, ships, no? Um, mga barco, no? Has longer life up to six years and the golf cart battery seven years and uh, some very nice uh, good quality batteries gel type acid type 15 years and some would even last 20 years and those that the telco use some of them would last 20 years okay and uh, alkaline batteries some of them would last 35 years well, because they have problems no uh, they're bulky, very long to charge, and very expensive. No? Then, of course, the nickel cadmium, up to 20 years. But today, we have the lithium-ion technology. You know, I mentioned already about uh, what Tesla has been doing in this battery. Huh? Producing the powerful battery and also teaming up with uh, various companies. You know, you know today, there is a, a uh, lithium-ion battery revolution. So, uh, companies in... In California, in Texas, in France, in Australia, and of course China and Japan, they continuously um, innovate and find, find ways on how they could improve the present uh, lithium-ion battery technology. But don't you worry, no? Uh, it's just a slide that would show you the comparison between a lead-acid battery, the common battery that we have today, uh, deep cycle battery versus the new technology lithium ion. Look at the bottom line. Huh? If you project using uh, the two, no, uh, you will notice that the lithium ion, which has almost uh, about four times longer the life of the lead acid battery, 
So you will see in this column that uh, you will be buying uh, lead acid battery. Uh, aside from the first, the first one you buy, you will be replacing it about three times. Okay, as compared to the life of a lithium ion battery. So you will only be buying the lithium ion battery once because it has uh, more than uh, it's about four times. It has a four times longer than life, longer than the gel type lead acid. So you uh, uh, compare compare these two costs, you will come out that uh, your lead acid will have a total of 195,000 pesos, while your lithium ion eventually will have a total of 103,000. So when you divide this uh, amounts to the kilowatt hours, uh, peso per kilowatt hour per cycle, performance of the two battery systems, you will find out that the lithium, lithium ion is only 21.85 peso per kilowatt hour per cycle, while the gel type lead acid will have 42 and 55 per kilowatt hour per cycle. So you see, so this new technology is really the future. It's the future. Aside from it has a longer life, uh, the, uh, it is more compact. No? It is it is more compact. Can you imagine uh, a 200 ampere hours, 48 volts? It's already, uh, you know, it's four times has a greater capacity than uh, your 200 ampere hours, that 12 volts lead acid battery. Okay, and I believe, you know, uh, like I said, companies like Tesla will continue to find ways to improve it. Okay, so there are other batteries like uh, Amaron, aside from, of course, Motolite. Motolite is the only Philippine company manufacturing batteries. The only problem with Motolite is uh, uh, their technology is not yet at par with the technology of the ones coming from uh, Vietnam, China, uh, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, and even India or Europe. Okay, that's the problem in Motolite. Uh, they're still in the in the old design. They must already be uh, coming to the new design, or the gel type maintenance free okay okay so uh, here is a uh, a sample of a lithium ion which is very thin okay that means uh, uh, it, it saves a lot of space okay and these are just old batteries but old battery the lead acid gel type and this is another lithium ion okay and then uh, you can include in your business the supply of LED street lamps okay and here are also the possible suppliers you can you can also research some other suppliers and here is just an example huh? so these uh, street lights combined uh, uh, the light underneath it and of course the solar panel above it this one and it the battery the lithium-ion battery is sandwiched between the top portion and the bottom portion where you have the lights so uh, and of course I included here some for easy estimates, solar price list. Wow. So I included here solar panels, fully ethylene. You have here the price. This, these are the sizes: uh, 270 watts, 150 watts, 100 watts. And below is the mono crystalline: uh, 360 watts, 300, and so on and so forth, with the corresponding prices at the right side. So you can refer to this. It can aid you in completing your estimate or your project uh, here. Uh, you have a charge control uh, inverter with built-in charge controller, off-grid inverters with corresponding prices, and then of course battery. You can also find others. Of course, it's just for comparison, for estimate purposes. Integrated street lights, and of course I included here simple designing. Uh, uh, here, the, the usual formulas. You are engineer, so you should know this. I refer you to the Philippine Electrical Code. Uh, this is the ampacity table of the Philippine Electrical Code. Okay, and then of course I included here two sample computations for the how you could come up with the capacity. So just follow the sample. Okay, and then here's another one for an off-grid. And uh, I include, included here a sample calculation for a storage battery and some uh, explanation. And here how to compute for an average kilowatt or kilowatt or watts load in a, in a certain house. So, on the same example earlier that I used, 
line 8 in the matrix 4,500 pesos per month then I came out with 625 watts average demand or average uh, uh, load no? okay and with that you can already compute for how many batteries do you need no um, well theoretically and how many solar panels would you need okay calculating the required number of solar panels and calculating or specifying the required charge charge controller if you are using the the old system the pulse width modulated system okay tips and installation make sure that if you are in, if you are installing your solar panels in the provinces the provinces in the country that are facing the pacific you make sure that um, the installation is very strong maybe you have to get the uh, certification of a civil structural engineer that your installation is adequate enough to withstand the strong winds remember the typhoon yolanda the winds of the yolanda could reach up to 350 kilo kilometers per hour so i'm i'm referring to these provinces samar leyte biliran batanes cagayan sabela quirino of course i'm talking about those that are situated facing the pacific no uh, of course those places after the sierra madre are already protected okay uh, metro manila is protected because we have the sierra madre in the tanay in the tanay and uh, and quezon area no so again i repeat quirino aurora quezon catanduanes camarines norte camarines sur albay sur sugon surigao del sur surigao del norte davao real all of these provinces uh, you have to make sure that the mounting is very strong. Do not mount it on bamboo uh, roofs. Do not mount it on nipa roofs uh, uh, or, or uh, wood, wooden trusses. No, you better mount it on uh, steel, uh, steel trusses with uh, GI, uh, GI roofs or, or some other roofs. Okay, you have to make sure it is strong. Remember, steel is the strongest. Uh, building materials that we're using of course if you have a roof deck concrete roof deck you can also put, put it in there okay so uh, this one is just to remind us that there is a correct mounting of the panel because of the location of the philippines which is uh, north of the equator this would be the recommended optimum angle of slant or slope of the roof that where you should put your solar okay so if if, you, if the area is uh, northern Luzon, Ilocos provinces, Lawag, Bigan, Baguio, Cordillera, Cagayan, Tuguegaro, etc., Vizcaya and Quirino, the angle should be something like 13 to 16 degrees angle from the horizontal. And it must be facing the south, huh? facing the south. Never facing the north, should be facing the south. Okay? And if it is Somewhere here in Metro Manila, including Bicol, uh, sorry, in Seoul, including Cavite, Batangas, uh, uh, Bulacan, uh, Pampanga, Bataan, Metro Manila, something like 10 to 12 degrees, okay, facing south. And if it is uh, somewhere in Cebu, Bohol, uh, Leyte, uh, Guimaras, and so on, no? all of these provinces, the angle should be something like 7 to 10 degrees facing south and if you are in uh, somewhere in southern Mindanao like Davao City, Bukidnon, Nagusan, uh, Cotabato, Sambuanga, Basilan, Sulu, Tawi-Tawi should be about 5 to 7 degrees. Huh? You might wonder, well this is my explanation, uh, uh, the sun is uh, just roughly on top of the of the equator where the equator is where Singapore and Kuala Lumpur is and the Philippines is about like I said it's north of the equator something like uh, Manila is uh, 14 degrees above the equator and you know US and Japan and uh, Canada are much much uh, farther from the equator so see I would show here that the mounting of the panel should be on the south side okay south side south side in America and Europe south side in the philippines but if you are in australia you have to mount it on the north side of your roof okay so that's the idea the sun moves 
uh, is changing its location. Today, because it is summer, it is directly on top of our of our roofs. Something like the sun is just here. Of course, very far from from us, but you would notice that the sun is somewhere here today. Huh? Uh, starting in May, June, July, oh, it's somewhere here. But gradually, as as the sun rotates around, uh, I mean the Earth rotates around the sun. The later on, it will be somewhere here. Then, and then later on, it will be somewhere here. And then you will notice that uh, during the cold months, uh, like for example, November, uh, December, January, February, somewhere the sun will be here. So it will. That means that at that time, it, uh, the Philippines is very far from the sun. And that's why it is very cold. It's colder than during summer. But take note, when you mount it on the south side of your roofs, when the sun is here, then your panel is still can harvest the sunlight. Oh, so that means here, during uh, some other months, here or during summer, you're harvesting you're harvesting the energy from the sun. Up the, of course, you can always put uh, a sun tracker, but of course, it's expensive. No, in America, they do it. They would install a sun tracker for their solar panel. But uh, in the Philippines, it's not uh, really uh, commercial because you know uh, our location is much much better. We are closer to the to uh, the equator. No, we are in the tropics, so we are much. In a in a in an advantage or advantage position, okay. So with the, our neighbors, Vietnam, Thailand, of course Malaysia, Indonesia, we are all in a vantage location. You have to think, uh, remember that. Okay. So that's the reason why, why we I specified uh, the the angle. So wherever is your uh, location, you multiply it by roughly by 0.87 to get that optimum. Uh, mounting angle okay so here is just my suggestion to make your installation more efficient uh, I will not uh, go into deeper explanation of this you can uh, further review it and uh, here are samples of the mounting using aluminum uh, uh, bars and it is one project that I did four years ago when I use galvanized angle bars so, uh, uh, I'll galvanize, meaning to say, uh, hot dip galvanize, so it won't rust for the next 15 years, okay? Of course, the mounting of this is perfect facing south. And the angle is uh, not, not 12 degrees, not 10 degrees, something like about 8 degrees, but still okay, no? No need to uh, uh, change so much, no? And here is a Tegola roof, where you could also use this... Uh, mounting brackets here okay which is inserted in the tegola okay so you can do a lot and here is just uh, warning signs that need to be mounted if you install one okay and this is a slide that shows you that, that re would remind us that we should install lightning arresters to protect our solar panels no? because you you're going to invest in in solar rooftop you might as well install lightning arresters so that uh, uh, your investment will be protected, okay? And here we have here some samples of uh, installations. Uh, here is an uh, inverter, hybrid of grid, and some batteries. So with these batteries, and here just a lesson. This about uh, uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but you notice there is already a shadow. So the correct way of mounting is to pull the panels uh, closer to the edge so that even at 5.30 in the afternoon, uh, there would be no shadow okay and uh, there's another way you just can inst you can install the panels close together no more spacing and you make you can use it already as your roof of course in between the panels you have to put uh, sealant silicon sealant so that water will not rain water will not leak, leak to your uh, down below no and here's another sample of installation. Here's another sample where the panels are installed very close together with silicone sealant in between. Another sample. And here is a closer look of the silicone sealant between the two panels. Of course, in here, the, so the solar panels 
are dirty. It is during summer when there is a, a lot of construction around the place. So there is a lot of dust going to it. So you have to clean it, okay? Again, I showed this earlier and I showed this also. And some of the installation I did for storage batteries. And a sample of installing uh, with an with a inverter in here. So you can have your panels connected in series to home run to your inverter. Take note, take note of the polarity as well as the you are not supposed to exceed the DC input voltage of the inverter. No? So if the inverter has a uh, let's say uh, uh, how many volts? Let's say uh, 180 volts. So having 4, 40 plus 40 plus 40, 40 would be 160. That means it, it, uh, the input is 160. You should not exceed the maximum rating or the minimum rating of this oh, okay here's just a sample of uh, a template you will notice uh, inverter mode 5000 watts DC 48 volts charger mode this one solar charger mode this one no and uh, again this one an installation typical of a 5 kilowatt hybrid of grid in the hybrid of grid there is no need for net metering okay uh, because the excess energy will go to the batteries okay here is a sample of its operation as explained okay and here is just the the indicator as you would notice how how the the system would work we have the solar panel to the inverter of course some would be stored in the battery but in this case the the battery is helping the 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 solar uh, convert energy for your AC okay so uh, there are just samples of their operation you can review them soon and some some sample schematics okay here I, I put in here some sample schematics which you can uh, you can uh, grab it and print it and you can also uh, ask me if I, I could send you a PDF copy of this if you want to it's another one it's another one and this one also and this one it's a, an elevation view and another one another one maintenance my suggestion is that uh, you have to make sure that uh, your system is adequately maintained no uh, you have to check them regularly like the panels must be clean huh? you have to clean the top of the panels you can probably use a, a pressure washer okay uh, but anyway, it's not a big problem because when it rains, the rain will already wash the dirt on the top of the panels, no? So, you know, uh, oh, except if you have some birds around the area and they put this, this uh, dirt of the bird on top of your panels, then you need to clean it really. You have to wash it with the uh, soap and water uh, so as not to damage the, uh, the surface, no? Of course, the surface of this panel is very strong. Even if you threw some stones on it, you will not just break it because it's not glass. It's fiberglass finish, you know. Uh, but it's very strong. You can even stand on it. Uh, very strong. And the weight of the panel is a little, it's uh, heavier than the GI sheet. It's three times heavier than the weight of a GI sheet. So it cannot be blown away so easily you know as long as you mount it put it with a tornillo with a nut and bolts and then it will not it will not be blown away okay and of course uh, controllers must be also installed where they are not well they will not be uh, get wet no when it rains they should not get wet uh, you know they are electronic uh, uh, devices so they should not uh, be wet no they usually have some ventilation uh, provisions on the sides no and batteries you should have to clean also if ever you would have dirt on top of it because sometimes the rodents would urinate on the top of the terminals of course uh, you have to clean them check check them for uh, any markings of dirt so that you have to clean them i'm showing you here old batteries that came from uh, i don't know where it came from but i bought it from a surplus no from the mrf uh, they are already there for about five years. So meaning to say, uh, I bought this uh, uh, already uh, second hand. They are already used when I bought it. So I have to check the voltages in the terminals 
and they still uh, are good readings no uh, this is a two volts this is two volts and this is two volts so when i connect them in series it's for this single battery is four volts the two batteries adjacent will now be eight volts and then the next one 12 volts all of this in series would notice it is it's uh, uh 24 volts okay 24 volt system anyway so just if you buy brand new no problem but if you buy a second hand you have to check huh? the second hand must be when they pull it out from the telco pull it out from where they've been used you have to make sure that the reading are still good because not all old batteries are are worn out some may still be okay the worn out you throw them away just selling uh, four kilo no four kilo yeah, i know you will make money out of it inverters inverters must be installed also indoors so they should not get wet otherwise when uh, they get wet the uh, uh, when rain uh, enters them then it will damage them okay now we are almost done uh, I have a friend that is looking for partners for, to put up a solar photovoltaic assembly plant. So just uh, message me if you want to, if you know, if you want to be involved with this. So this is the schematic flow diagram of the of the assembly plant. It it is supposed to import the silicon wafer and the the wafer would be cut in here, cut to the correct sizes, and. Uh, uh, connect, uh, interconnected and put the framing framing trimming and put the terminals and tested and would be sold so that's the idea so it's a photovoltaic solar panel manufacturing okay and here is a, a possible uh, uh, it's about uh, 500 square meters warehouse minimum area okay now assuming that you already have put up your business huh assuming that you have followed my suggestion to put up the business and you have already uh, sold one project no maybe to your neighbor to your friend or your relatives okay well, depending on your own beliefs after your first delivery or sales hold a thanksgiving event better still is to have your office blessed by a priest or a pastor it is always a goodwill act to hold this thanksgiving event because you can invite your friends, colleagues, relatives, and your possible clients to partake in your initial success. Prepare some to us food, of course, and some wine and some token. Because, you know, these friends of yours, this colleague of yours who will be uh, partaking in your, your blowout, will be telling it to their friends. They will be telling it to others, to your future customers. See? So that's how you'll be able, will expand your business, okay? And my suggestion for your business, money begets money. You know, uh, you must have pohonan. If you do not have pohonan, you have to. You can go to the bank, borrow money, or first you borrow from your relatives, your parents, to your uh, from your uncles, from friends, and so on and so forth, or from the bank. If you have a collateral like a, a land title, or what other means. If you have a car or your father owns a car, you tell him, Dad, can we sangla your car? And then uh, ORCR lang. Huh? ORCR, get a uh, money, buy the, uh, buy the goods, deliver it, collect the payment, oh, return the money. Oh, money begets money. If you do not have the money, you will, know, you will not go anywhere. You know? You'll not become rich or will not progress. Okay, number two, two important roles in business. Role number one, the customer is always right. Okay, so why? Because the customer will give you the project, will give you the award. Okay, role number two, if the customer is wrong, go back to role number one. In other words, if the customer seems to be telling something that is not correct, you should be tactful, you should be diplomatic, not to offend your your client, your customer. Otherwise, he will not give you the award anymore. See? Okay, number three. Always strive to do positive things in life in order to attract positive karma. You know, we usually talk about karma, which is negative, no? Uh, oh, sana makarma ka. No, the thinking there is negative. But me, I would like to talk about the positive side. So, doing things positively will always give you uh, something positive in return, okay? 
Number four, in order to ensure the continuity of operation of your company, of your business, more kind of products should be added. That's why not only solar panels, charge controllers, inverters, um, solar street lamps, I mean the integrated street lamps, and batteries. You can also go into local charging, no? I mean, uh, uh, because there will be more electric vehicles in the future and they don't have the, the solar panels, you can put up in your place and uh, they can come to you and charge their electric vehicles no? as long as you have a solar panel on the roof and you get the energy to charge their, their uh, electric vehicle from the energy from your solar rooftop okay last but not the least invest in research and development so the only way for you to be able to uh, make your business last long and grow is for you to find ways on how to develop more products more services and improve the operation of your company you should not just stop uh, you know uh, continuously find ways on how to improve self-improvement business improvement okay so uh, i hope i was able to uh, impart to you something oh by the way we have this cracks our group the MEPEP organization of the philippines conduct conducts this cracks now what is cracks cracks is short for certified renewable energy practitioner or expert the MEPEP Organization of the Philippines has now an ongoing certification process which aims to train and develop technical people who can plan, design, estimate, procure, supervise, install, test and commission, operate and maintain, and expand home rooftop or office rooftop or commercial rooftop renewable energy solar supply system. Okay? So... Your truly has been, uh, uh, I believe, in the forefront of uh, pursuing this advocacy to help our country. This is the only way. And I believe that if we do this all together, and this is not only for ourselves, but it will also be for our, for the sons of our sons, or for the apo ng mga apo natin. Okay? So, let's help each other, let's help our country, and let's do it. Okay, this is another picture, my advocacy in Pugadlawin, where I discuss solar among the graduating high school students. Also, I conduct it in my place here in the past. Of course, we do it there in MEPEP, but today, we just simply do it using online. Again, thank you very much, and I hope I was able to impart something on you. And I have my numbers here below, and you can also uh, uh, chat, chat me, and you can also... Uh, uh, message me oh we have a very long chat oh my god anyway I I'll give justice to this very long list on the chat uh huh very long very long very long anyway do we still have enough time uh, Gobwa Jumer because there's a very very long chat uh, chat box here oh my god it's very long really anyway so let me check with uh, Gov uh, Jomer if you have the time. Do we have enough time more? Oh, it's already 5 o'clock. I'm very sorry. But anyway, let me just answer a few, no? Uh, not... Uh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, good afternoon. Let me answer some technical ones, huh? Not, not, the, that, not the greetings, okay? Let me answer some technical ones. Okay, um... Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, let me see. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, I don't, most of them are greetings. Let me just go on it, okay? Uh -huh. Okay, some more. Let me give you more time. Oh my God, uh, most of them are greetings. Uh -huh. Oh my God. Most of them are greetings. Anyway, I'll, I'll give justice to this in my, in the future. I will. Uh, send you, I will answer it. Just follow it up on YouTube. So, uh, uh, because the time is up already, we might. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, okay, I, I will just make uh, uh, a, a final comment. Uh, okay, again, uh, thank you very much, uh, Gov Jomer, for inviting me, and uh, thank you very, very much to our participants. I hope I was able to impart to you. Some, something and I'd, I hope I was able to convince you uh, this is a noble act that you have to do 
to help our country. Uh, thank you very much and good afternoon. Oh, there are some questions. I think uh, there is one question here that I saw. Uh, is it true that your bill will double if you apply for net metering? No, because in net metering, uh, it will measure the energy that you export and it will be given value. Okay, uh, it will double if you have uh, if you do not apply it properly. No, uh, the digital meter, the present digital meter, will record your consumption that is going up it will record it as a consumption okay so you have to apply for net metering no it's not true but if your electric meter is an analog type you mean the, the old one yung may umiikot pa then take advantage of it because it will just reverse when you export energy to them okay uh, let me just answer some some good questions huh? uh let me give, give me time some more i i'll see some of them here uh-huh anyway uh, no more more of them more of them are thanking uh, anyway I, I i'll go back to them i'll try to answer them thank you very much again good thank you and good afternoon